In this video, I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do. Uh, I've done a lot of HVAC videos, uh, but this one I'm going to heavily criticize uh, another YouTuber uh, that does HVAC videos. A uh, little bit of background on me. Uh, I was 27 years uh, a service tech, HVAC service tech, commercial, uh, industrial, residential. Uh, my father was in the business. My grandfather was in the business. He was in steam. But, uh, and after 27 years of service tech, I taught it for nine years. I do pretty much know what this stuff is all about. Okay, I'm criticizing DIY HVAC guy. Now, he's got a number of videos, and some of them I've been fairly happy with. He he's explains things fairly well, and he has a, a pretty good knowledge of, uh, of what the industry is about. This video, uh, 10 degree cooler air with this. Uh, he's talking about shading uh, an outdoor unit of an air conditioner. What I think he's done here, he's lied on this thing. This is a flat out lie on it. The The numbers are, are way off. They're not even close to being right. Okay, now I've taken a few shots out of his video. And the first thing he does is he takes a temperature of the top of the air conditioner. It's in the sun, so it's gonna be hot. Uh, and it's like 140 degrees or something like that. That is a meaningless temperature reading. It doesn't mean anything. It isn't volume. It isn't BTUs. It isn't amount of heat. It isn't volume of heat. It's just intensity of heat. And he's saying, well, you know, if this air conditioner seat metal is hot on this thing, then uh, if I was to shade it, then it would be more efficient. Okay, now he's using a uh, infrared thermometer, uh, and it's okay for what he's using it for right there. Down the road a little bit, he's using it for things that don't make any sense. But it reads the temperature, but again, it's not reading BTUs. So, I tried a little trick here. Uh, I took the same type of reading he's taken, but I put a temperature probe, an air temperature probe, not an infrared probe, and put it in the fins, and I'll show you this in a minute, and it's gonna read the air temperature moving across that coil. And the unit's off, and we got it all this high temperature. I want you to look at just what happens when this unit starts up. And what happens to the temperature of the air moving into the coil? Before we fire it off, I wanted to look at this. I've got a temperature probe, that's a thermocouple probe, uh, in the uh, louvers, not touching the louvers, not touching the coil. And let's see what happens when we fire this air conditioner up and see what temperature difference we get. I'll show you the temperature here in a sec. Okay, we're sitting there at 125, so it's a little bit lower. It's not in the, uh, it's not touching the metal. Let's see what happens when you fire this air conditioner up. We're at 99 here. Uh, so what happened to all that heat we have? You know, that 140 degrees and all that sort of stuff. Where did that go? I got to tell you where it went. It went away. There was nothing there. Sheet metal 
does not hold a whole lot of heat. For 98.7, temperature here is 99. This thing almost immediately went down to the ambient outside temperature. Let's uh, take a couple more uh, checks with that uh, infrared. Okay, here we got the infrared out here. That's one down a little bit on the top up here. What did it do down here? It's still showing higher, isn't it? So the next thing he does is he goes in and he uses this infrared probe. Now this is an infrared probe. It's not an air temperature sensor. So he goes inside the structure and he takes a uh, this uh, infrared temperature probe and uses it to sense the temperature of the supply air inside the structure. Uh, it actually comes up with a fairly close number, which I would expect it to be, uh, 56, 57 degrees, uh, you know, maybe a 75 degree ambient or something like that. And, and so that's actually pretty close, but that's not the proper temperature probe to use to sense air temperature. Now, I'm going to show you a little thing, and this is just a little test of these infrared probes. They do not sense temperature the way you think. And let's watch this, and it's kind of surprising how, uh, how these things work or don't work for uh, sensing temperature, certainly air temperature. For this demonstration, I've got three pieces of sheet metal under there. I'm pointed right now towards the white one, 96.5 degrees. Now, the aluminum foil, 56.6, 57 degrees. The dark painted aluminum, 115. And the sheet metal right beside it, 46, 47 degrees. Okay, what you're looking at here is the true temperature of the air in that area. So the wide variation of temperatures that shows from these temperature probes pretty much gives the lie to using these for air temperature. They don't work for it. There is an uh, emissivity chart where you can adjust uh, the readings for very shiny materials, but uh, without using something like that, you're going to get widely varying uh, numbers. And we're going to see pretty soon uh, where he's got some numbers that don't make any sense. Uh, you can see this shade that he's got on there. This is an AC shade made of uh, this, I don't know, some kind of material. And there's some uh, plastic pipe that's holding it up and some bungee cords and stuff. And Okay, if it took just a very few seconds to pull any heat that was on that uh, outdoor unit, I mean, it was like, what, 10 seconds? And the heat's all gone. And the air that's going into the coil is ambient temperature. So the shade is going to save you hundreds of dollars or something. They said it costs a hundred bucks and he gets a kickback. I don't have a problem with the guy getting a kickback, but not for something that doesn't work. Now here's where him and I depart ways. After he puts the shade on, he goes inside to the supplier and checks the temperature. Now the temperature has dropped from 56 or 57 to 46 or 47. That's not possible. It violates physics. One of the misconceptions that a lot of, uh, a lot of people have that don't know about this stuff is they think if they make it more efficient, the temperature in the ductwork will go down. So there's colder air coming out of your vents. That's not how these things work. They don't work anywhere close to that. Uh, most of these coils are 
uh, 17, 18 degree split. What that means is air comes in at a certain temperature and it drops that temperature down, you know, 17, 18 degrees, depending on the age of the equipment and so on. So if I, if I did increase the efficiency of the unit, you know, reduce the head pressure or something like that, uh, subcooled it more, whatever. Uh, if I did do that and uh, with whatever I did, it would not give me colder air temperature. The unit may not run as long or something like that, run with less amperage, uh, lower head pressure. It might do any of those things. But reducing the duct temperature, it can't do. Now, he could have done uh, head pressure check, uh, subcool, amp draw. He did none of those things. The reason he did none of those things was very simply, if he had done that, he would have showed no difference. Uh, he's just taking one reading because it's simple to do and easy to fake. We have fixed the problem. Now he's using a temperature probe that's not reliable for air temperature. Uh, and I don't know what he's done. Maybe he's uh, plugged up his air filter or something like that. Because that's what that can, can increase it if you, uh, if you block off your vents so there's not as much air coming through. Uh, but whatever he's done, it was not the result that he got could not have been from shading the unit. It just can't happen. So that's why I'm coming down on him. He's doing this uh, to sell something that really doesn't do anything. Okay, hopefully I've disposed of some of this uh, stuff that doesn't work. Now I'm showing you the west side of my home. That siding is sheet metal. It's uh, steel, and there's a couple things I did. Now, I took the temperature of that sheet metal, and it's like 150 degrees. And it's about 100 degrees outside now. So, is there anything we can do that'll fix this, you know, help? You're not going to help a lot. If you want to get 50% or 30% off, you just, you know, don't waste your time. It's not going to happen. Uh, I did this. Uh, those panels up there filter out most of the uh, sun's heat. Uh, and they're in front of two big picture windows. Now that you can do that. Now understand that's probably not the best solution there because those panels cost about $250 just for the panels themselves without the framework. And they're going to last about 10 years, and then they're going to fall apart. So, not everything's free. Never is. Let's take a look around the south side, and I'll give some ideas of what I think might help. Okay, here we're looking at the south side of the house. Now, there's a maple tree there, and a little maple tree beside it. Arborvitas. Lots of brush. If you can put some sort of plants next to the house that kind of shade the walls, that'll help. I mean, it's got to grow and you know all that, but uh, we're not talking about things that are going to fix everything. Uh, you can also look at insulation in the ceiling. Uh, most places have got so much insulation in it now that it's probably not going to make any difference. Uh, but you know, if it's, if it's needing insulation, if it's got six inches or four inches or something, you need a lot more than that. Uh, but a lot of vegetation near the house between the sun and the house can help. Okay. I've got a gazebo out here and I put these roll up shades, uh, and that's mostly just to keep the sun from coming in. This is mostly in the shade anyway, but the only reason I've got them on this video is if you put those on the outside of the windows, that's where they're most effective. 
Blinds in the inside help, but they don't help as much as blinds in the outside. And they can reduce some of that heat coming through the windows, especially on the south or the west side, sometimes east, but usually it's south or west. That can keep some of it down. A negative thing about it, uh, you don't get to see much out of your windows. Uh, the other thing is, those are about 50 bucks a piece. You've got 100 bucks in those things, and they'll probably last about three years. So, so just a few tips of things that I thought might be valuable. But it isn't going to fix everything.